Hello, this is me and my family. And right now, we're in the middle of somewhere and nowhere. A part of Canada that most Canadians will never get to see. Our journey here has taken us through empty, windy roads that seem to go on forever. We've crossed canyons, changed a tire, challenged our fear of heights, and witnessed some of the best views Canada has to offer. So why don't you join us on a journey to the edge of the earth? Our story begins in a tiny gas station town named 100 Mile House. It's located in the heart of the Caribou, which is pretty much South Central BC. It's also the place where my parents live and where I grew up. Any journey requires some preparation, so we load up some crab traps, probably some fishing rods, hook up the trailer, throw some bags in, and then finally hit that sweet, sweet, dusty trail. Our first stop is just a one hour drive north and the last bit of civilization for a while. Williams Lake, BC. After grabbing some last minute supplies, we are off to our final destination for the night. Nimpo Lake, BC. It will be about five hours, all without cell service. But along the way, we'll find some truly spectacular views. And after a long drive, it's time to retire at the Retreat Wilderness Inn. But not before taking in this beautiful sunset. There are so many beautiful places to see in this world, and I'm always happy when I get to share them with my family. Anyways, that's it for the night. The next morning we wave hello, say, buenos dias, grab some pepperoni, and hit the road for the final leg of the journey by dirt, Bella Kula. We were off to a great start and making excellent time until we get a flat tire. And everyone lent a hand to make sure the tire change was done as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, I put the drone in the air to get some fantastic views. In no time at all, we were off, again, down one of the most dramatic roads in Canada. For a long time, there was no road to Bella Coola, so the locals built one in 1953. It features a 15-kilometer descent from the plateau to the valley floor, losing over 5,200 feet in elevation via a number of steep grades and switchbacks. The construction of this road was described in the books as Bella Coola and a road that leads west.
At the bottom of the valley, the dirt road turns to pavement and the vegetation completely changes. Introducing us to these fantastic coastal views. After about three hours of driving, we finally made it to Bella Coola and figured it's a good idea to get that tire fixed. Which buys me some time to show you this beautiful yet isolated coastal village. The word Bella Coola is actually an exonym and corruption of the Helsic meaning stranger or somebody from Bella Coola. This is where the road ends, so it's time to put that boat in the water and say hello to a baby seal. After loading the boat with people and gear, it's time to head out and say goodbye to land for a while. And this is our last chance to make sure all systems are operational before we head out. Our final destination for the day is named Shearwater. It's located in the Great Bear Rainforest, which is situated on Denny Island. Denny Island is 450 kilometers north of Vancouver, 3.3 kilometers east of Bella Bella, which is a local isolated Heltzik community and a hundred kilometers west of where we just launched our boat. Because we're at the mercy of nature, this trip can take anywhere from two to five hours by boat. Luckily for us, the seas were silky smooth. So smooth, in fact, that we decided to stop near shore for some last minute fishing. And in no time at all, we were in sheer water. I'm always fascinated that a place like this can exist without roads. It's a place that most Canadians will never get to see. Once we tie up to the dock, we unpack our bags as we'll be staying here for a few days. Once unpacked, we ride over to our parents' cabin, which is located just one kilometer northwest by boat. This is a place we have been coming to for many years and I always look forward to it. Its secludedness and beauty is profound and something I always find myself daydreaming about during the hustle and bustle of everyday life. And then we scratch together a simple meal for the night. We were losing light by the time we got back to Shearwater, so I wanted to capture this amazing sunset before bed. The next morning I had a bit of time to explore Shearwater. It was originally built as an anti-submarine bomber reconnaissance post in 1941 and then abandoned in 1944. It was then purchased and developed into a fishing resort with a full service marina, restaurant, hotel, and even a gift shop. But enough of that, it's time to fill up the boat and 
hit the deep blue sea. This is the last part of our journey, a journey to the open ocean, where the land ends and the vast endless sea begins. The water is often rough this far out, but always worth the effort. The raw, unapologetic nature forces one to be in the moment. Often our world is filled with complexities and confusion, and I find it more important than ever to find our own special place. A place to leave behind our man-made world and remind us that beauty is all around. And for a moment, remember that we're all just floating around on this pale blue dot. Thanks for joining us on our journey to the edge of the earth. <laughs>